Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, you're very welcome this evening. I'm Dr. Aaron Courtney. I'm a lecturer in clinical pharmacy at the School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences at Ulster University. Uh, delighted to put on this session this evening, and I have a number of staff with me tonight. Uh, I have Mr. Martin Smith from Admissions. I have Ms. Avril Fox, who's one of our uh, senior administrators within the school. I have Dr. Deborah Lowry, and I have Dr. Uh, Heather Coleman as well. So hopefully we're here to, to answer any questions that you have this evening. Uh, tonight's focus is really looking at the um, information session relating to the interactive component that we are bringing into the admissions process for pharmacy. So the plan this evening is to take you through the MPharm uh, honours degree program. So this is the program that you have to undertake if you're interested in becoming a registered pharmacist here in Northern Ireland or in the UK. That's with the PSNI, the Pharmaceutical Society of Northern Ireland, or the General Pharmaceutical Council in Great Britain, which is England, Scotland and Wales. And we as a university and school of pharmacy are accredited by both. And as such, we have a range of things that we have to implement to make sure that our students come out and are ready for the working world. And we're here this evening to give you some information on the interactive component, a new element that we are bringing in as part of our admissions process. So we're delighted to uh, work from a fantastic campus. We're based at the Coleraine campus at Ulster University. Um, includes modern teaching facilities. We have the Riverside Theatre, state-of-the-art sports complex. Anyone that knows the north coast of Northern Ireland knows that it's a fantastic location for outdoors, uh, for walking, for trails, for tourist attractions, for water sports. And of course, we're very close to the seaside towns of Port Rush and Port Stewart. Fantastic holiday destination. And indeed, if you're interested in surfing or any activities like that, it's a fantastic part of the world to come to. I'd like to start off uh, by explaining a little bit about why we as a School of Pharmacy um, are, are so delighted to speak to potential candidates who come to us. This is a, a quote from one of our past graduates, Louise Toner, um, and she's given us permission to use this quotation in some of our outreach materials. And you can see here that she states, the single best decision I made as a 17 year old was to select pharmacy at the University of Ulster on my UCAS application form. We're delighted to get comments like that from our students, and we think it's fantastic that we're able to, to, to work with graduates uh, when they leave the, the university and go out into practice. Uh, a little bit of boasting on our behalf, we are the number one school of pharmacy um, for pharmacy and pharmacology, and that was ranked as of uh, about a month ago through the Guardian League tables, and we're delighted to be back on our top position there. Um, and hopefully to retain that for the incoming year. So we do have a fantastic track record here in the School of Pharmacy. So what are we going to be covering this evening? Well, the reason we wanted to put on tonight's event was to have a discussion about this interactive component that we're bringing in as part of our admissions. Now I want to give you some information as to where you can go to access information about admissions, about the entry qualifications, about the requirements, and further information about the course that you might be interested in. I want to give you a little bit of background as to the changing role of the pharmacist and why this interactive component has been brought in. I want to talk you through what it is, how it will work, what you could be asked, um, and all of the different things that we hope that you can, you can prepare for then when you come to, to speak to us. Um, we will give you contact information and there will be an opportunity for questions. If you do have any questions throughout the talk, feel free to put those into the chat box. Um, and we will do our best to either address those directly or indeed um, address those at the end of the talk this evening. So first of all, for anyone who is looking to uh, access information about the MPharm course here at Coleraine, you can use our online web pages. If you use the link attached or indeed just simply Google Ulster University School of Pharmacy or MPharm degree program, they will bring you straight to our web pages. Our UCAS code for the course is B230, and for Ulster University, it's U20. So if you do want specific information on the admissions and what our entry requirements are, I would encourage you to look online. We're not going to go through those in detail this evening um, because it very much depends whereabouts you're coming from and what qualifications you have. Now, what I would say is if you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to myself or any of the staff at the, at the university or indeed the best people to speak to are the admissions team, the admissions department, um, and they will be more than happy to talk through 
um, any specific requirements you have about qualifications. Perhaps you're coming with alternative entry requirements that you maybe don't see listed online. That doesn't mean that you're not eligible. It simply means that we have to do a little bit more background research to see if those are appropriate. So we're more than happy to work with you on those. So please do contact our admissions teams. In terms of the changing role of the pharmacist, if you go back 20, 30, 50 years ago, pharmacy was very much involved core as the, the manufacture of medicines and the dispensing of medicines. Now, over this last 20 years, there have been huge changes in the world of, of healthcare and how it is delivered in who's involved in the decision making and how we work with patients. And as pharmacists, we are very much involved at the patient facing edge. And that has very much changed over this last 10 years. We have seen huge leap forwards in the science and professional practice of pharmacy. Pharmacists are known for being the experts in medicines. So if you have a question about medicines, you would go and see your pharmacist. Um, there has been an increased role in terms of what pharmacists are involved in. And as a result of that, there is an increased requirement for pharmacists to be good communicators, to be able to speak, to be able to write, to be able to interact with the general public. And that uh, takes place across three key sites here in Northern Ireland in community pharmacy. So that's your pharmacist that you would see standing in a chemist shop, for example, but also in a hospital setting and in general practice. Now we go one further in this course and we, we make sure that our students are well capable of working in those three key environments, but also in industrial settings. And should you wish to go on to do other activities or other courses, uh, we, we certainly prepare you for, for life in the world of clinical practice and or science backgrounds. So we're very proud of the fact that our pharmacy degree prepares you for a great many things going out into your, your working world. As a result of these changes over this last 10 years, the regulatory bodies who accredit our degree programs, that's the GPHC, the General Pharmaceutical Council, and the PSNI, the Pharmaceutical Society of Northern Ireland, have across the UK brought in new standards that they expect universities to work to. And as part of this, we are introducing a short interactive session with pharmacy staff. So any candidates who are applying to the, the M Farm program, who want to become a pharmacist, who want to become registered with the regulatory bodies, will have to undertake a short interactive session with a member of staff from within the school. This is something that we would be offering to students who have been given a conditional offer, and you will be given that conditional offer subject to conditions including performance at the interactive component. And that's what this session is designed to give you some information about, what to expect, and certainly the timelines which you can expect in this incoming year. Now you can see here, we've, we've prepared a, a brief uh, timeline of events for you. And I'm just gonna take you through that now so that you have an idea of what to expect in the incoming year. So for anyone who applies to get onto the M Farm program at Ulster University, who applies before the 25th of January, offers will be made to those individuals who are appropriate based on their academic requirements or their academic attainments so far. And those offers will go out beginning around November time. And the team here at the university will work through those as, as quickly as they possibly can. Um, and those are based on entry requirements subject to successful completion of the interactive component, along with the likes of uh, an appropriate health check and access NI checking. Once that takes place, we as a university will send out, we will contact uh, offer holders uh, and additional information regarding the interactive component will be sent out. And um, so that's, for example, dates and times of, of when you can expect to attend campus to undertake one of these interactive components. We are planning at this stage to run on the 18th of February in 2023, the interactive components on campus. So we would anticipate that students would come to the School of Pharmacy for an open day style event where you could come and see around the facilities certainly bring parents, bring whoever you would like to bring to see the, the campus, the, the, the teaching facilities, the laboratory spaces that we have, and to meet some of the staff members. And as part of that experience, applicants to, to get involved in that interactive component. Okay. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more later as to what that will, what that would look like. 
we obviously anticipate that not everyone would be able to travel to the university and um, for various reasons for international students for example it may not be practical and so we will offer online sessions for those who are not able to attend but we would certainly encourage you to come to campus to meet the staff to see the facilities and see where ultimately you're likely to be going to to undertake your m farm training on the 8th of june 2023 uh, offer holders have to make their firm and insurance choices um, and so at this stage we would anticipate that the vast majority of students will have undertaken that interactive component any applications that are made after the 26th of june uh, in 2023, offers will be made within a couple of days of us receiving the application from UCAS. Um, and again, that's a very time dependent uh, scenario. That's where the university will be working as hard as we can to get offers back out to students, appropriate students, as quickly and as effectively as we can. Applications that are received after the 30th of June 2023 would be put into a clearing process and offers will only be made if uh, places are available and after successful completion of the interactive component. So at that stage, that's very late on in the process, we anticipate that we would have to run interactive components as an online session, and those would be arranged probably on a one-to-one -one basis and certainly with reasonably quick uh, turnaround. So hopefully that gives you an idea of the timeline and what you can expect over the incoming year. And maybe some of you can already start to see where you are in that timeline. Um, and, and what you maybe need to be thinking about in the, in the coming weeks and months. So I've mentioned now already a couple of times this interactive component. Um, and I suppose you're probably all wondering, well, what, what actually is this? Is this an interview? Is this a, a series of questions that I'm going to be asked? And really what we see this as, it's an opportunity for you, the candidates, to speak to Ulster University staff all of the staff that will be involved in this interactive component will be trained and experienced staff within the School of Pharmacy and who would have direct contact with you as part of the M Farm teaching process at some stage throughout your course. Uh, we anticipate that the interactive component itself will only last somewhere between six and ten minutes. So it's a relatively short and brief interaction. We would hope that you attend on the 18th of February for, for applicants who can to attend the face-to-face -face sessions and we will be running that as part of a, a school and campus tour as such and we will provide you with information ahead of time on that. For any student not able to attend campus we would be offering online sessions and again these would have to be arranged on a one-on-one -on -one basis uh, and we, we can absolutely do that it would be through something like Microsoft Teams or Zoom or if there are any particular issues that you have with connectivity we, we can certainly work something out. What will be involved is a, a small number of situational based judgment questions. So these are scenarios that we would put to you whereby the student has to consider the information that they're being given and to work through and provide an appropriate outcome, an appropriate answer. And with all situational based judgment questions, often it's not necessarily the answer that you give that's the most important thing. It's how you interact and it's how you communicate your rationale for the answer that you're giving. But primarily, we see this as an opportunity for candidates and students to, to ask questions about the course and to meet with the university staff and to explore that from a very early starting point. I've mentioned already our professional requirements. Um, what we have to check for is six key points in individuals that we anticipate would make good pharmacists and this is what has been provided by our regulatory bodies so we are looking for an individual who is person-centered patient-centered in their approach who has good problem solving and decision making skills a self-motivated learner someone who has effective communication someone who has a high degree of professionalism and personal integrity and someone who can show resilience and is adaptable in their behavior. So the scenarios that we will be giving you are clearly an opportunity for you to demonstrate to us some of these six points. Now, it's not going to be a case that all of these six points have to be addressed in each question, but certainly when you're given a scenario, something to think about, we want you to consider these six uh, professional values and attributes 
as the key thing that we are looking for you to demonstrate as someone involved in this interactive component. So how will it work? Staff will simply assess the candidate's performance based on what you say. So we will provide you with a scenario, uh, either written or verbally, and you will then be given an opportunity to have a think about what it is you would like to say, and then you simply explain to us your, your answer and the rationale behind the decisions that you have made. So each scenario will then be scored by our trained and experienced staff within the school, and candidates ultimately would be ranked um, uh, according to their, their overall score. So each individual scenario, you would be giving a score or you would be given a score based on uh, a series of uh, outcomes that we would be expecting students to, to discuss. In some instances, uh, candidates may say something that might cause some concern with staff. And in those instances, staff would be highlighting those individuals to the uh, senior staff within the school. And at, those, at that instance, it does not necessarily mean you have been um, kicked off the program or not been able to join. You will simply be asked to, be, uh, to undertake a follow-up interview with the senior course academic staff member on the MFARM program. So that would be, for example, some of the staff who are with me this evening, myself as course director, um, Dr. Heather Coleman as our engagement lead, Dr. Deborah Lowry as our academic lead for education, for example. And that's where you get a second opportunity to demonstrate the six uh, professional attributes and values that we are looking for. And that only takes place if one of our staff members raises a concern or highlights something that the student has said. So what, what could you be asked? Well, you will be asked a series, you'll be given a series of scenarios where you have to think about the information that has been given to you. You will have to provide an answer, but the key thing that we are looking for is that you communicate your thinking, your rationale, your logic as to how you have arrived at the answer that you're given. So we are telling, telling applicants at this stage to focus on how you communicate your rationale for the answers that you give rather than the specific answer that you have given, okay? So these are not a test of your knowledge of pharmacy or science or mathematics or biology or anything like that. Um, we are one of the best schools of pharmacy in the country, I'm delighted to say so. Um, and as such, we will ensure that for those students who make it onto the course, we will give you all of the skills, knowledge, competence that you need to make sure that you can thrive as a, as a pharmacist. So we're not, we're not assessing your knowledge of pharmacy at this stage. And um, we, we fully admit that we will give you all of the information once you get onto the course as to how to become a, a useful practicing pharmacist. So try not to focus on preparing um, information about the pharmacy or sciences or mathematics or anything like that. These are situational based judgment tests that you will be given where you will be asked to consider the information, provide an answer to the problem, and to communicate your thinking, rationale, and logic very clearly. So just to finalize on the interactive component, as we've said, this is an opportunity for you to demonstrate your professional values and attributes, those things that make you uh, someone who would be a valuable member of the pharmacy profession, who has, for example, person-centered skills, problem solving and decision making, self-motivated learning, effective communication, professionalism and integrity, and resilience and adaptability. These are all key things that as practicing pharmacists day to day, you would have to demonstrate and, and, and be competent in. And as such, we are looking, even at this early stage, to select the best students in terms of those who are able to demonstrate those professional values and attributes. As a secondary, this would be, of course, an opportunity to meet some of the staff and to ask questions about the course or indeed the campus. And we would be more than happy at that stage once we've come through the interactive component to answer any questions that you have. So hopefully that has been helpful for, for some of you to have a look at. Um, we have a range of information that is available on our university web pages in relation to our admissions. And I would certainly encourage you to, to look at that. 
Um, if you go on to ulster.ac.uk and search for pharmacy, it is the M Farm Masters in Pharmacy Honours Program that you need to undertake if you want to be a registered pharmacist in the UK. And if you have any questions that we're not able to address this evening, please send us an email, get in touch with some of the staff, um, or you can send them through to pharmacy at ulster.ac.uk and our staff will pick those emails up and we'll get back to you as soon as they can with, uh, with the answers that you're, that you're after. Hopefully that, that puts you in a position to be ready to apply. And if you are, we would encourage you to do so through the UCAS website. And I'm sure many of you who are coming through secondary school settings, for example, will be in a position and guided by your teachers. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch with us. So on that note, uh, that's the, the formalities of the session over. I, I want to thank you very much for coming on the call this evening. And if any of you do have a question, please place it into the chat box. We would be more than happy to answer it um, as best we can. And the staff, we're happy to hang around for uh, five or 10 minutes just to make sure that we mop up any questions that you have. So I'll just check the chat box at this stage. No, so no questions at the moment. Thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate you taking your time to come out this evening. I'm going to stop recording.